everyone! In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this knitted dishcloth. If you want to learn how to knit, this is really the perfect project to start with because it only requires the very basic knit stitches and the pattern is very repetitive. So you'll get lots of practice doing your knit stitch and by the end of it, you'll be really good at it. And plus, this is just a really handy project and it's useful around the house. For this project, you'll need some cotton yarn. I'm using the Burnett Handicrafter cotton, but you can really use any type of cotton yarn that you like. Just make sure to read the label if you're using a different one to see what size knitting needles you'll need. But for this one, I'm using the four and a half millimeter uh, knitting needles. This is the same as a US size seven. And then you'll also need just a um, needle to weave in the ends at the end of the project, and of course some scissors. We'll start by making a slip knot. The yarn ball is on the left, and the tail end of the yarn is on the right side. Wrap the yarn around your fingers, crossing the yarn over on itself so that it forms a loop. Then reach into the loop and hook the end of the yarn on your finger and pull it through. This is our slip knot. Now take one of your knitting needles and insert it through the knot. You can tug on the tail end of the yarn to tighten it a bit on the needle. Now we'll start casting on our stitches. I have the loose end of the yarn on the bottom and the part that's attached to the ball of yarn on top. Take your index finger and thumb, then hook the yarn on your fingers like this. This part's a bit tricky to explain, but the yarn should be crossing over on itself where it's hooked onto your thumb. And I'm holding on to the end of the yarn with the rest of my fingers. With your knitting needle, insert it under the part of the yarn that is in front of your thumb. Then bring it over the yarn that is on your index finger. Then back under the yarn at the front of your thumb. Let the yarn go from your thumb and stretch your fingers out so that the stitch tightens onto the needle. Let's cast on another stitch. Go underneath the part in front of your thumb, then over the part around your index and back under. Let go from your thumb and tighten. Now we have three stitches. Let's do one more. So underneath the thumb, then over and back under, let go and tighten. Now you can see that we have four loops on the needle. And now we can actually start knitting. So take the needle into your left hand and move the yarn over to your right side. This is the end that we'll be working with. I'm just moving the stitches up a bit to the top of my needle so that they're easier to work with. Now take your second needle and we're going to do the basic knit stitch across this row. To make the knit stitch, put the needle under the first stitch. It should only be going under the part facing you. Then take your yarn and wrap it around your right needle counterclockwise. Then scoop your needle over to the front and move that stitch off of your left needle. And that's the basic knit stitch. We're going to do the same thing to the rest of the stitches that are on the left needle. So insert the right needle through the front of the stitch, wrap the yarn around, scoop it through, and take it off your left needle. Again, insert the right needle through the front of the stitch, wrap the yarn around, Scoop it through and take it off your left needle. Just one last time. So into the front, wrap the yarn around, bring it over and then take it off your left needle. So there we go. We finished our first row of knit stitches and you can see that we still have the same number of stitches here. We have four. Switch the needle with the stitches over to your left hand and take the empty needle with your right hand. In the first two stitches, we'll do the same knit stitches that we did before. So insert your right needle, wrap the yarn around, bring it forward and take it off the left needle. And just one more knit stitch in the next one. And now we'll do what's called a yarn over. And this is what will increase the number of stitches we have to make the dishcloth wider. All you need to do is wrap the yarn around the right needle counterclockwise, and that's it. 
Now we'll just carry on with our knit stitches until the end of the row. And now you'll see that we have five stitches on the right needle, so we added an extra stitch with the yarn over. Switch that needle over to your left hand, and we're going to do the exact same thing on this next row. So we're going to knit the first two stitches. Then yarn over and knit until the end of the row. Now we have a total of six stitches on the needle. And from this point on, the pattern is very repetitive. We'll just do the knit stitch in the first two stitches, then yarn over, and keep knitting until the end of the row. So with each row, you'll increase the number of stitches by one. You want to keep repeating this until you have a total of 37 stitches. Yes, it's going to seem like it'll take forever, but once you've done a few rows, it'll become much easier as you start to get the hang of it. I'm just going to keep going and I'll show you what it looks like when I get further along. Here's what it looks like so far. It's actually starting to look like a dishcloth now. So anyway, I'm just going to keep going. In the same pattern, I'm going to knit the first two stitches, then do a yarn over, and knit to the end of the row. I'm going to keep going until I have 37 stitches in total on the needle. And I'll show you what it looks like once we're there. Alright, this is what it looks like at the halfway point. I have 37 stitches on my needle now. And with this pattern, it's very easy to adjust the size of your dishcloth if you want it to be smaller or larger. I prefer a smaller dishcloth, so this is what works for me. The edges that you see here will show you the width of your dishcloth. So if you want a larger dishcloth, just keep going until you see the width that you like. That might be 40 stitches or more, it's really up to you. And if you want a smaller dishcloth, then only repeat the pattern until you have, for example, 20 stitches. So now that we've reached our halfway mark, we'll start working on the other side of the dishcloth, and this is where our pattern changes a little bit. Here's a finished dishcloth. So far, we've been adding one stitch to every row to increase the size. Now we'll start to decrease. And don't worry, it's still very simple, it's just going to be a little bit different for the second half. In the first stitch, just do the regular knit stitch. Now we want to knit two together. So take your needle, and pick up the next two stitches together. So your needle should be going underneath the first two loops. Then wrap the yarn around, scoop it up, and take it off of the left needle. Now you can see that what used to be two stitches has become one. Now do a yarn over. So just wrap the yarn around and we're going to knit two together again. So go through the next two loops. Then wrap the yarn around and 
then take it off the needle. So again, those two stitches have now become one stitch. And you should have four stitches on your right needle at this point. Now for the rest of the row, we'll just knit as we normally would. So I'm just going to keep on knitting and I'll meet you once I'm done this row. So I finished the first decreased row. Once we get a few more rows in, you'll be able to really see the dish cloth starting to decrease in size, but you can start to see it on the edge here that it started to come in. So for the next row, we're going to do the same thing as the previous row. So in the first stitch, just do the regular knit stitch, and then we'll knit two together. then yarn over and knit two together again. With every row you'll lose one stitch so all you need to do is repeat the same pattern until you have only four stitches left on the needle. So you're going to knit the first stitch, then knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and knit to the end of the row. So I'm just going to keep repeating this pattern and I'll meet you when I only have four stitches left on my needle. So here we are, I only have four stitches left on my needle now and we're almost done. Now we need to take the stitches off the needle and create a nice edge. This is what's called casting off. So to cast off, we just want to knit the very first stitch. And knit the next one too. Now with your left needle, insert it through the first stitch that we knit, the one furthest to the right. And bring this stitch over the second one. And just take it off of the needle. Now you should have one stitch on the right needle and two on the left. So knit the next stitch. And again, insert your left needle into the first stitch. Bring it over the second one and take it off the left needle. One more knit stitch in this last one. Then insert your left needle into the first stitch, bring it over the second one, and then take it off of the left needle. So now you only have one stitch left on your right needle. Just give it a tug to make the loop longer and take your scissors to cut the top part of the loop. Just pull on the end that's still attached to your ball of yarn to detach it. Now all we need to do is weave in these ends that um, are on each end of the dishcloth. I'm using this plastic needle, so just loop the end of your yarn through and start weaving in the ends of the yarn. So there's really no specific way to do this. Just Loop it through the next stitch you see and bring it toward the center of the dishcloth. So I like to thread it through one way, then go back the opposite direction and back the other way. This really helps to keep the ends secure so that it holds up well when you're washing dishes. And once you're done, you can just snip the end bit here. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other end, just weave it in with my needle. And that's pretty much it for this pattern. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you'll give it a try. 
If you do, send me a picture on Twitter or tag me on Instagram. I'd really love to see your projects. And also, I have the written version of this pattern. All the links will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!